Today we're making three different recipes. They're three of my favorite recipes that I've done so far on the channel. And I wanna celebrate us hitting 1 million subscribers because I've been waiting for something to come. And that thing is this absolute beauty right here. I'll show you a bit later on in the video. But I just wanna say thank you to every single one of you that supports the channel. It means the world to me. Never thought I'd get this far. And to see this, it's pretty much a dream come true and you made that happen for me. So thank you all so much. Let's get straight into the video. Now for this recipe, we're combining three different things into one to create one beautiful recipe. We're going to be starting off with our steak. What I have here is a 500 gram ribeye. This is a scotch fillet choice here but I do recommend using something quite thick because we're going to be reverse searing it which is placing it in the oven then finishing it off in a pan to get that beautiful crust and make sure you take this out of the fridge for at least an hour before you're ready to cook people say half an hour or 20 minutes it's just not long enough do want this to be exactly room temperature that way you'll get that even pinkness throughout the steak and you won't get those ugly gray walls either side what we're going to do with this is season it generously with salt and cracked black pepper on both sides don't worry i'm not over seasoning it right now it does look like quite a bit but it will take a lot because this is a thick cut of steak and also the reason that it's on a wire rack is just due to the fact that it, the heat can get underneath it and it will cook a lot better I'm also going to be using a meat thermometer for this. This isn't a paid advert or anything like that. It's just a really good way to cook it and make sure it's accurate. Then place it in a 120C or 240F preheated oven and cook this for about 40 minutes or until it has an internal temperature of about 45 degrees Celsius. Now, the next thing to do is bring a pot of water to a boil. This is going to be for potatoes. And you might be thinking, why would you bring a pot of water to a boil, then add potatoes in there? There is a secret trick to getting absolute perfect roast potatoes, which is what we're going to be doing. And I'll explain that in a second. As for the potatoes, we're going to need 1.5 kilos of any high starch potato. These ones right here are just regular Australian white potatoes. If you can get russets, they are way better for this type of thing. You can't seem to find them anywhere in Australia. So if you do know a place, let me know. And as for these, we're just going to peel off the skins. You can save the skins, roast them up in the oven with a little bit of oil and salt and create beautiful crispy skins. But it's up to you what you want to do with these. Once you have these peeled, you can cut them however you like. I like to cut them into eight different pieces. If they're on the larger side, you can cut them into about 16. Just make sure they are the same size though. That way they'll cook at the same rate. And once the water is at a boil, we're going to generously season it with salt. Then add in five grams of bicarb soda. This is going to draw out the pectin and the starch and create a super fluffy potato. And also the reason that the potatoes are in boiling water first is it's going to cook the outer shell and not the inside. When we rough these up, they're not going to fall apart. Also, we want to cook these for about 15 minutes. Now, with our steak at 44 degrees Celsius, we can then remove this. I'm just going to allow this to rest now for the time being whilst we do everything else. This will go up a few degrees in temperature, but it won't go past 50, which is rare. And that's going to be an absolute beautiful crust when we put it in the pan and be that perfect medium rare. If you like it cooked longer, obviously cook this longer. I'll have all the details in the description about all the cooking times and temperatures for you, so don't worry about that. What we're going to do now is add 90 grams of duck fat, goose fat, or beef tallow to a large roasting dish. About 15 minutes. Going back to our potatoes, these have been boiling away for 15 minutes. The outer layers are fork tender, but the inside's still a little bit solid. That's exactly what we want. These can then be removed and drained through a colander. Just be careful of any steam or any water splashing back at you. I then recommend just giving these a quick shake just to get off any excess water. And whilst you're doing this, you can rough these up a little bit. This is going to break those outer shells. And when that fat penetrates it, it's going to create crispy pockets. And they're absolutely fantastic. You should have something that looks like this. Once you have the fat that's nice and hot, it should be smoking, but not really, really smoking, if you know what I mean. We're then going to gently add in the potatoes. Do not pour these in because the oil is really hot and it's sizzling as we put these potatoes in. Just make sure you spread them out. They're not all sitting on top of one another. Then we're going to transfer them over to the oven and cook these for about one hour, rotating the tray every 15 minutes. Now you can say we're saving the best recipe till last. This recipe got me to where I am today. It holds a place in my heart. We're making creamy garlic mushroom sauce. It's absolutely delicious. And since the original video, I've upgraded it even more. Still same ingredients, but just a different procedure, different cutting methods to get better flavor overall. We'll start off with one shallot. We're going to slice off the tip, leaving the root intact, slice it in half, and then make thin slices across, stopping at the root. The same as you do as an onion, slice it horizontally, and then dice into small, medium-sized pieces, trimming off any excess flesh from around that root the next thing is six cloves of garlic i'm gonna run these along a microplane just to grate them up get them into a nice paste make sure you scrape it all out of there 
Then we're going to need 350 grams of chestnut or Swiss brown mushrooms. Slice these up into about a medium slice. We're going to need five grams of flat leaf parsley and about three to four sprigs of thyme. Roughly chop this up, just make sure that there's no large leaves or stems. Place a pan over a medium high heat, add in one tablespoon of olive oil, add in the shallot, as well as a pinch of salt. And then we're going to saute this for about three minutes, just mixing it around regularly. We don't want to put too much color on this, we just want it to be slightly translucent and a little bit of a crunch. We can then add in the garlic, just spread this out because it will clump up a little bit because it's a paste, just make sure it's completely mixed through. Just cook this for about 30 to 40 seconds, mixing it the whole time. Then add in the mushrooms, along with two tablespoons or 28 grams of unsalted butter, a nice big pinch of salt which will help extract the moisture out of the mushrooms. Then we're going to saute this for about six to eight minutes, just until the mushrooms have released all their moisture and the onions and the garlic have caramelized slightly. Once you have that done, we're going to add in 60 milliliters or one quarter of a cup of dry white wine. A Sauvignon Blanc or a Pinot is perfectly fine for this, just use a cheap one. Cook this down for about two minutes until it's reduced by half. Then we can season it up with salt and cracked black pepper. 20 cracks worth. And add in 400 milliliters of thickened cream, also known as whipping cream or cooking cream, with a fat percentage of at least 35%. Of course, you can add less if you wanted to. But trust me, this sauce reduces down really well and it's absolutely fantastic. Whip that all in, mix it round really well for those flavors to become friends, allow it to come to a simmer, reduce it to low, and then cook for about six to seven minutes. In the meantime, we're going to cook our steak, place a large pan over a high heat, get this smoking hot, add in two teaspoons of olive oil, then add in the steak, making sure it's sitting completely flat, and sear this for about one and a half to two minutes, just until you get a beautiful crust on that side. We can then flip this over and we're going to turn the pan down just a slight, just in case it gets a little bit too hot. Then we can add in two tablespoons of unsalted butter, two cloves of crushed garlic with the husks on, a sprig of rosemary and two sprigs of thyme. Then we can baste that butter over, tilting the pan and using a spoon. This is going to create the most beautiful crust and flavor. Just cook this for another one and a half minutes. Then we can remove it from the pan. Just allow it to rest over a wire rack and there's a beautiful crust. This looks absolutely fantastic and just listen to that sound. Whilst it's resting, you can also add over the garlic, the rosemary, and the thyme, and all of that butter. I'm going to allow this to rest for five minutes. Now, going back to our mushroom sauce, this is thickened up really nicely, and if you run a spatula through it, you should be able to see the bottom of the pan like so. We can then add in those herbs. They are optional. You don't have to use them if you don't want to, or go and spend the money on a small amount of herbs. Just mix this through, cook it for about one minute, then remove it from the stovetop, and just set it aside for the time being. After an hour on the potatoes, they're beautifully golden, super crunchy, and smell and look fantastic. Transfer them over to a bowl, hit them up with a generous seasoning of salt, and you can also use rosemary salt if you wanted to, and just give these a shake and then set them aside. Once the steak's been rested for about five minutes, we can then separate the bone from the actual scotch itself. You can use this for presentation, and it does have a little bit of meat on there, so we can serve it as well. And with this, if you want to slice it like what I'm doing, you can do that if you want to, or you can just serve it on the plate, but I'm doing this for the video's purpose, just to make it look a little bit more presentable. With that done though, we are left with this beautiful, delicious steak. It has a perfect color in the center, it's a perfect temperature. Transfer this over to a plate or whatever you're going to serve this on. Add on that bone for a little bit of presentation. Then we can add over the potatoes. This recipe does serve three to four people, but I've cooked one steak for the purpose of this video. Then top it off with that beautiful, creamy garlic mushroom sauce. And what we're left with is this fantastic recipe that is combining three of my favorite recipes that I've done so far into one, leaving us with this delicious, absolutely fantastic meal. After all of that's done, you do only have one thing left to do, and that is the best part. And that is we can then dig in. If I was to make this again, I would not change a single thing. Those potatoes are perfect. They're soft, they're fluffy, they're crunchy. There's so much flavor going on in there. That steak has the most beautiful sear. It's packed with flavor as well, and it's perfectly cooked. Of course, you can cook it to your liking. And then to start off the show, that creamy garlic mushroom sauce, it is just absolutely delicious. There is nothing else I can say about this other than please do try this yourself. Of course, you can change it up as well. Add some greens in there, some carrots, it's up to you but definitely do make this. As I said at the beginning of the video, I cannot thank you all enough for all of the love and support. Whether you're new to the channel or you've been subscribed for a while, every single bit of your support, your comments, the likes, everything just really helps me out, helps the channel be seen by more people. And I cannot thank you all enough. It really gives me the motivation to keep going. And I just love what I do. And there's so many new things coming to the channel, so many new features. I've got something really, really good planned for the future or for next year. And this in this box right here is something I've been waiting for ever since the day I started YouTube. I think it's pretty much anyone that does YouTube's dream to get one of these. And I'm gonna show you what is inside here right now. And obviously we've got the other silver play button, which is the 100,000. But 
right here, I have the 1 million gold plaque. I'm so proud to have this. I cannot thank you all enough. It, literally, without you guys, I wouldn't have this. So it, it's all of ours, really. <laughs> but no, seriously, thank you so much. It means the world to me. And I'm going to end this video before I shed a tear. So thanks for watching.